Please don't be like plastic memories. Please don't be like plastic memories. Please don't be like plastic memories. A tree is an anime about a turtle and his AI daughter who. Wait, wrong one. A tree is an anime about this guy and this girl who's a robot and the relationship between them. Which should set off immediate red flags for those of you who have watched any anime about robots or AI before in your life. These types of stories aren't super rare in the sphere of anime and manga since the topic of AI has only grown more relevant as time has gone on and more and more people want to create their own take on the direction it'll go in. What really caught my attention in this one was how human a tree came off at the start. In most stories about AI, it's always about the AI slowly gaining emotions and becoming more human. They're all usually super tragic in the sense that the second the AI character finally gains that humanity, life immediately hits them with something that makes them wish they didn't. Atri is somehow almost the exact opposite. Atri's AI character arc happened years before the events of the show, and it's shown in a flashback where the main character's mom, Shiori, befriends the robot companion her mother gave her due to being too busy to take care of her own kid, and Atri ends up breaking one of the most fundamental rules that AI cannot violate when she beats up the girl that was bullying Shiori at school. This action causes Atri's model, 58 of which were produced, to all get recalled as they were too dangerous since they were capable of human-like decision making. Of course, this story is unknown to the protagonists throughout the first half of the story, so to them, a super lifelike AI just showed up out of nowhere and started acting like a normal human girl. The sheer amount of rejection Atri has faced in her story really makes you feel bad for her. It's pretty clear that she's had a heart from the start, only wanting to be helpful to those around her and wanting to do the best for everyone. But nobody can accept this because she's an AI and isn't supposed to work like that, and her lack of understanding of this despite wanting to still help makes the tragedy of her story unique from the other AI characters we've seen before. Rather than losing everyone around her and having her dreams torn away from her, she is constantly pushed away from those that she wants to be close to. It's a type of tragedy that the average person can probably relate to a lot easier than mass death. The show has spikes of ups and downs every couple episodes. The ups coming from this feeling of acceptance and progress as Atri interacts with all the main characters, and the downs coming from some sort of reveal or mystery surrounding Atri that causes mistrust, since nobody really understands what she is. It makes sense, considering the first thought that the main character had after finding this girl was to sell her. But seeing how flawed and human the supposed hero of the story is, is something you don't see a lot in anime. He grows on you though, as you watch this emotional back and forth between him and Atri as you go along. One episode he's considering selling her, the next he's discussing AI rights, and the, no, the one after that he's intentionally violating those rights. Okay, maybe the pacing is a little bit more reasonable than that, but the show comes off as incredibly relatable with how it jerks the main characters around. From Atri considering herself a mere tool, to starting to warm up to the people around her, to being pushed away and treated like a monster again, to people finally actually warming up to her, and then having to go inside the spam container. Uh, I think it's supposed to save humanity or something. I think the thing that really fascinated me about this show, though, was the discussion of the soul, or I guess, the heart. I'm always intrigued by how each anime takes on the topic, since most of the ones that cover super advanced AI are a little bit too busy being tragic about the AI attaining that sentience to really talk about the deeper stuff. But since this one had an AI that was fully sentient from the start, I guess it had a little bit of time left over on his hands. The point that was brought up in Atri about the difference between AI and humans was that there was none. And I feel like that's something that a lot of us skip over in these discussions of sentient AI when the topic comes up nowadays. Because it just seems like such a far away thing that it doesn't even feel remotely possible. But I remember reading a comment under a Neurosama video once, asking how we would know if AI ever became sentient. And I think the answer is... We probably wouldn't. Because if you think about it, AI and human learning, or even actions, are eerily similar. Well, of course they are, because at the end of the day, we're just meat computers. We learn by copying others and act by responding to stimuli. At the fundamental level, AI already performs the exact same functions as a human does, they're just not as advanced. There's no such thing as the irreplicable emotions that humans have or human creativity. Those things are simply more complex learning and response algorithms that we humans have that AI do not yet. 
Of course, after that point, the conversation devolves into the discussion of the soul, the afterlife, stuff like that, which I am in no way qualified or willing to talk about for both the sake of my channel and my sanity. Atri is a story about an AI that does have such algorithms. It's about an AI consciousness that was made so advanced that it got to the level of being capable of being flawed, making it incredibly human. The story, then, isn't about the AI somehow learning more and more and somehow becoming sentient, but realizing the fact that it is. You see, Atri started off the story with what can kind of be seen as an inferiority complex. She saw herself as a being that served to be of use to her master, offering herself to be sold or even dismantled for the sake of advancing the goals of the people around her. Her self-worth was near nothing, because of course it would be after she was pushed away so violently by the master she was closest to. She became obsessive and clung on to Shiori's words, boasting herself as high function and not really even thinking it possible for her to have her own emotions. To the point of explaining in her own diary that she did certain things because she thought it would please her master. And then, when said master discovers this, he flips out and does the exact same thing his mom did, but arguably worse because he orders her to literally not act like a person. On the surface, Atri seems like a heart-wrenching story about an AI coming to gain sentience with a dab of environmental activism sprinkled throughout. But in reality, it's a journey of self-worth. At the end of the anime, Atri doesn't choose to get into the pod because it was her directive to or because she had to. She was presented with a choice between completing the original order she was given or being able to spend her life with the person she loves. And she chose the prior not because she was programmed to, but because she felt like it was where she belonged. That it was the purpose she wanted to serve. At the end of the anime, it's pretty clear that Atri's complex wasn't completely gone. Even though she had come to realize her worth, she still lacked a purpose, and that led to her choosing what she chose. However, I believe this is another thing that made her seem all the more human to me. Because a person can't just get rid of these underlying mental issues in the short amount of time the show covered. In fact, most of the times, those issues are imprinted so deeply on a person's life that they can never fully be fixed. And that's okay, because that's what makes everyone different. That's what makes us human. And I've gone and overanalyzed some anime again. I'd make a great English teacher, wouldn't I? Anyway, that's all I had to say about Atri. It's not the best show about robots ever, but it does do something that the rest of them don't. So leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. My name is Sue, and I'll see you all next time. Also, I've got a gaming channel now. It's still Sue, just with zeros instead of O's. It's mainly Overwatch montages for now, but I'll come up with something more interesting as time goes on. I figured I'm the type of guy to do my college homework and spend the rest of my time just playing games like a bozo, so I might as well make some lower effort content that comes out of it. So it doesn't just, like, feel like I've dropped off the face of the earth.